Hey there everyone, it's Amy from the Creative Confidence Catch Up here. Welcome to the podcast that's designed to inspire, motivate and encourage you no matter where you are in your creative journey. Join us as we share insights, stories and triumphs of individuals who have harnessed their creative confidence from discovering your unique voice to overcoming creative blocks. We'll delve into strategies to overcome any self-doubt you may have that can help propel you forward. Um, yeah, so in uh, episode two of the Creative Confidence Catch-Up, today I'm going to be talking uh, with CJ. So if it is that you'd like to introduce yourself here, uh, CJ, a bit about what you're all about. Hi, Amy. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm CJ Wally. I'm a writer and producer based in Stoke-on-Trent, um, working in the film industry. I've um, got three films under my belt. I also run a platform called Script Revolution, which is a script hosting platform. And I've got a published book about the craft of writing as well, which is out there in the ether. Wow. Seems like you're very, very busy at the moment. So with that in mind, how with this, with all these different things going on, do you find your confidence is right up there or along the way? Have you felt that uh, it's been a rocky road? <laughs> It's definitely been a rocky road and my confidence levels. I mean, it's that, um, that term they used in clueless, sporadic, um, up and down on a daily basis. And, you know, you get those big wins and you're bouncing off the ceiling and then you go through those lulls and you can't get out of bed. And um, I have to say, no amount of success has ever really changed that for me at all. All oh, right. So, um, obviously, we've spoke previously, and we've bit, we've t- uh, we've spoken a bit about um, education and navigate navigating um dyslexia. How's that been for you? Tough, really tough. I, I mean, this is kind of profound irony to what I do, and that is that I am a writer who's heavily dyslexic, and dyslexia and creativity have you know, a, a link as old as time. So it's kind of inevitable and very common, very common that is, um, particularly with um, film writers. Um, like Guy Ritchie and people like that are also oh, dyslexic. Really? Yeah. And obviously Tarantino, you know, his, his scripts are notorious, mm-hmm. you know, for, for little errors. And that really impacted me most at school. <clears throat> Be- um, because obviously school is academic and academic tries to work on a, objective um, analysis of 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 what you do and at school I couldn't spell very well um I couldn't proofread very effectively and um my handwriting was terrible so I hid everything behind um word processing um I was very fortunate in that I had access to computers at a very young age I knew how to use early versions of word and things like that before the teachers did so i would just type everything out and that meant that i could use a spell check and i could hide all those issues pretty much and reformat and not have to worry that i was writing things wrong where it hit me most was of course whenever i had to write something down in an exam or something like that and it was just i just fell apart and paid the price and got middling grades and I think another thing about being a creative is paying attention in class and not and your mind not wandering. Wondering as soon as you become disengaged, you daydream, right? You're an. I used you're to an, find that. Right, you're an imaginative person. I, I I would doodle. I would you know clown about and things like that, and then the teachers would would catch wind of that, and because they knew I was quite bright, it really frustrated them because I wasn't applying myself. And sort of infamously, I came out of high school, I think with a B or something like that in English. And my English teacher just, they said, I, I can't, I, I can't forgive you for doing so well, because you didn't deserve to do so well, because you didn't pay attention in class. Wow. So in, that's interesting. So like in terms of, um, we were talking um, previously as well about this idea of uh, how would you define community? And what I found most interesting was when you were talking about this idea of, um, I suppose, an alternative type of community, which was found in books. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. Um, I mean, when when you want a community around you that you can thrive within, that you can grow within, that you can hone your craft within, when you can sort of see a path ahead of you and get that kind of mentoring, because that's what you want. You want yeah. mentoring, you want wise mentoring. And that's hard to find sometimes if 
you're in a sort of odd little niche. And what you can end up doing is you can end up being in these peer groups, you know, like writing groups in my case yeah. and things like that. The issue with that is you're surrounded by people that are either on the same level as you or quite often below you in terms mm -hmm. of their, their sort of proje projected success. They can't advise you. They can't give you an idea of what it's like that one step up the mountain because they've not been there. They can speculate and, and have opinions on that. And boy, do they. And that's really tough. So I found books to be these incredible resources. I, I, I found my friends within the writing of books, you know, and some of those friends I found have since passed away, but have left mm -hmm. their knowledge and guidance and kindness behind them. So I re I learn really effectively from reading because I've got my attention in there and I can visualize what someone's saying. So all those autobiographies and things like that in particular taught me so much. And like, I feel like I kind of know these people a little bit as a result wow. of that. So that was my community when I was, you know, a, a bit of a, a hermit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose you can deep dip, like you can deep dive into things that you are interested about, and when you can connect and resonate with what's going on there, it makes you stay focused, makes you feel interested. Whereas I suppose on the outside, where you are trying, you are being told to fit in a box or be a certain way, it's really hard to kind of engage with those sorts of people. Then, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, there's this, um, you know, this is this key piece of advice some people give, and that is study your heroes mm -hmm. and study your heroes' heroes as well. And one of the amazing things about learning and, you know, with these people that have opened up, these, you know, these incredibly famous, successful people, you know, these iconic individuals who you think are indestructible, who were infallible and never had any fear of what they were doing whatsoever. And yeah, relatively, they do come across as fearless, and maybe some of their behavior is fearless in itself but when you read about how vulnerable they are how much they struggled how much flack they got how much negativity they went through quite often until they were very successful you know that that's something that I learned over and over again is that you know the support comes after the success quite often and that was just so enormously powerful for me and one of the big reasons why I promote book learning and finding your friends that way is you can go to the library and you can get some of these books for free and when people put it in words they put it very carefully into words there's no confusion you can go over it over and over again so it is incredibly powerful incredibly poignant yeah, that's interesting how you say you get the support usually after once you've found it. And that is really true. And I suppose it's that idea of once you've researched into all these books or found the support that you don't actually need from anybody else after you've got it. I suppose um, it's that idea of you've you formed a sort of clarity so people will know you for that thing or people or you understand more about yourself. Until that point, though, however, it's really hard to understand yourself if you don't know, I suppose, whereabouts you get, if you don't have a focus or an interest or it's trying to find that out, maybe. Absolutely. That's so true. I mean, having a belief in your own voice um it's probably one of the hardest things i think most artists go through from what i've seen um because for the majority it's just you or your key supporters are people around you who will always want you to succeed and never want to say a bad word mm -hmm. and you will always have that doubt when it comes from that like for instance one of the biggest supporters in my life is is my mum, right? She's incredible. Oh, yeah. She's always incredibly we love, we love supportive. Mums. <laughs> mums, right? And sometimes he's pretty much been just my mum who's been vocally supporting me through the tough times. And, you know, there have been times where I've pushed back because I'm like, well, you're my mum. You're always going to say nice things yeah. and, and all that. And then quite often, you know, it turns out to, to be the case. So, yeah, I think in terms of finding your, your voice and sticking by your voice, then obviously success is going to be a big validator of that. But at the same time, the danger is finding success in areas where your voice and your happiness isn't based. And this is the really, really dangerous thing, which is why you really, really need to do some deep self-reflecting on what makes you happy and who you yeah. are before you go in there. And we've seen it, you know, we call it selling out. That's the, the, the typical term for when we see it from the outside. And that's when you start to see success in areas that don't make you happy. But then it's very difficult to push back from that, to, to get away from it. Because like you say, you become known for something. But I have sort of A, B tested things, particularly lately. 
Oh, wow. Because awesome. I have studied about, yeah, I've studied about pop culture and things like that. And, you know, I've been through a bit of a rocky road recently in terms of the reception of films and pushback and trolling, you know, because I make, you know, female led stuff and that creates a sort of a, a pushback. And mm-hmm. qu- lately it was quite interesting because I opened up about some of the struggles. When I opened up about the struggles, people were quite hesitant to share what I was doing and support what I was mm-hmm. doing. And then a couple of months later we got some really positive news things are on the up you know and a a film was trending and really well reviewed and then suddenly everyone was sharing my posts and supporting you know and it's like of course people like success that's natural in us um -hmm. so there is a lot to be said for being out there and being positive if you want Mm -hmm. to see a positive response would would you say then um i suppose your newfound confidence i suppose wasn't then as a result of people it was from these books and th- this way of learning about what it is that you wanted to read about perhaps like this idea that create it, to to make your creativity flourish flourish you had to go through the process of reading books to it's a bit of a self discovery process oh it was a, it was a, a, a artistically an absolute game changer um, it was one of those, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where I'm going things. And, you know, pushing, I did push the reading back for a long time because mm-hmm. of the commitment of doing it, purchasing books, the ones that weren't at the library and stuff like that. But once I got in there, yeah, I just kind of rolled around and engrossed myself in all of it. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, But yeah, I mean, it was this kind of, I, I won't call it, maybe a bit of a rite of passage, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, it was just suddenly like you you're seeing yourself in other people's stories or you're seeing other people's stories applied to you. Mm-hmm. And I, that gave me a path forward. And I think one of the hardest things I find as a creative is having a logical, systematic path forward. I can't project very well in that well. That's yeah. in that way. I can't do that. And this gave me some understanding of the mechanics behind stuff. It's not all just subjective and purely artistic there is an industry a mechanism human behavior and things like that that you need to kind of see where you fit in with and that's brought me a great deal of comfort mm, it does it it sounds like through this process though you've you've really dug deep about yourself and it's from even though you've like gone through all these different roadblocks and things like that it's almost I know it sounds a bit might sound a bit odd but to have to go through all these difficult times and setbacks and things, it's a actually a really good way to kind of portray who we really are. We get to align with things that are about us and um, other people who can support us. We find that, um, whereas if we don't go through those processes, we're probably not any better off. I would I would agree with that. I think I, I think I do. I think you do need to kind of test the waters. You do need mm. to have contrast for it to make sense. So learning what you don't like or or going through those tough times or going down those wrong paths will definitely help highlight when you're on the correct path as well. I have read stories about people that have kind of just fallen on success all the yeah. way through. And this is great this wonderful upward spiral of confidence that, you know, I, I speak about in my book about this upward cycles. Um, and yeah, I'm in, envious of those people that didn't have to go through the brutal struggle and pull themselves up, up out of that sometimes. What it gives me, which I think is the most wonderful thing, is it gives me empathy for other creatives. Wow. And as someone who has a platform, you know, Script Revolution has a book and things like that is I'm not talking from this point of view of someone that's just found it so easy all the way I'm talking you know from a really tough time that mm. I can empathize with people for I think one of the books I read that really had a big impact on me and I wasn't expecting that and I didn't see it was Stephen King I'm not a Stephen King fan I, although I have to say a maximum overdrive cracking B movie back from the eighties, he completely disowned the whole thing. Doesn't even mention it in his book. It was that <laughs> bad. That's the bit I love. Um, but finding out about his struggles when he was a, a lecturer and, you know, just living in this um, one story little bungalow where I don't think he even had a phone, he had to go around to his neighbors to, to take calls and stuff like that all before Carrie. That was fascinating. And that was like, wow, you know, even the most incredibly successful people out there were just going completely undiscovered for so long. Mm, It's interesting because it is, it's that case of like all these people who are famous or successful or uh, their expectation of being successful and all that. It, they see um, a lot of the time people see these people like they've always been like that, when really underneath the surface, 
they've probably been through a lot and it's it's interesting how like I suppose conversations such as this that we're having now it it gets people like talking about these like it is the norm rather than hiding that underneath the surface because Mm -hmm. I do find like sometimes we need to speak about these things as a way to yeah channel who we are to that's a form of uh, self-discovery though isn't it like having the conversations you get to discover yourself in a bit more of a deeper sense absolutely and you you need a kinship out there with your your fellow creatives you need to be able to sit in a room i think one of the biggest problems we have is we import a lot of american culture and american culture is very much focused on being successful looking successful yeah you know talking the talk before you walk the walk and all that and um never showing vulnerability um americans don't like to portray themselves as an underdog you know modesty is an alien concept them along with sarcasm and um i think we've imported too much of that over here um you know i don't i think it's quite a toxic culture um and i think i've come to realize some americans struggle with my britishness because my britishness is based in you know i'm not i'm an artist i can never be happy and i never want to be happy because that's the life of an artist i Mm. should be tortured and pained and depressed all the time and and all that and curmudgeonly and yeah I, i i do think there's like this big culture gap and it's no surprise to me at all that the people that want to talk about how tough it is how hard it is how human the existence is is based in britain Mm. oh yeah 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 well it's been um, such a really uh, great like um, opportunity to speak with you today yes cj and um i suppose as we come towards the end of uh, this uh, episode um yeah have you got any like final top tips words of encouragement um at all anything that you find uh, useful well we spoke about you know finding your voice and things like that and feeling a bit lost and you know reaching rock bottom and coming back and things like that and something i I often tell people is go back to the stuff you were creating when you were first doing this and you were so excited and and that was big for me huge for me i did start late i started in 2012 when i was 32 Mm-hmm. you know so it's quite late in life so it was very easy for me to do that it might be a bit more difficult for some people you might have to get back to your childhood and things like that um but yeah i mean revisiting the first few scripts i wrote and what i really wanted to do back then because the beauty of when you first start providing that you do just jump in with both feet rather than dilly dally around and yeah. ask everyone procrastination which oh. some people <laughs> i have watched people quit before they even started and the great thing about Jump Pig Ed is you, you, you're kind of fearless and you haven't uh, absorbed a lot of the negativity and hesitancy and questioning and introspection that exists within the peer groups that you'll inevitably run into. Um, for instance, in screenwriting, you know, everyone's obsessed with formatting and um, page count and a lot of very 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 superficial stuff and no one wants to upset or offend anybody and everyone wants to get in the easy way you know by writing something that fits in with whatever's happening right now well of course that's not how you instigate change that's not how you stand yeah. out or anything like that and it's a pretty miserable way to create as well because every time you're trying to move forward you're holding yourself back So, yeah, I mean, going back and looking at your original stuff and you're just like, you should hopefully fall in love with your past self, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. as the innocent young creative that you were. You should go back and go, wow, you know, I love me. And well, other people will love you, too, you know, in the same way when they see that voice come back. So that's the best tip I can give anyone. Go back to your roots, have a look and just and just and just become the fearless little creative that you once were i love that that's great no thank you so much for coming on today it's really much appreciated and really enjoyed the conversation you're welcome it's been an absolute pleasure that's great thanks cj bye